two tampons mean my marriage is over. It's been a harrowing journey since my initial post. I, 29F, and my husband, 30M, had shared seven years of what seemed like a blissful marriage, with four years of wedded life under our belt. Our love was strong, or so I believed. My husband often joked that we were still caught in the honeymoon phase, despite the challenges of raising our two children. I never had any reason to doubt his loyalty or our relationship, until a shocking discovery rocked our world. About a month ago, while securing our daughter in her car seat, I stumbled upon a tampon wedged between the car cushions. This discovery was peculiar because I had an IUD that had halted my periods for the past year and I didn't recognize the tampon's wrapper. When I confronted my husband about it, he appeared clueless, failing to comprehend why I was so concerned. It was only after I explained where I found it and why I believed it wasn't mine that he suggested it belonged to a co-worker named Fiona. My husband often carpooled with his colleagues for lunch, and we were on friendly terms with Fiona and her husband. So it didn't seem out of the ordinary that she might have dropped the tampon in our car during one of their rides. I pushed the matter aside until we had dinner with Fiona and her husband a few weeks later. I desperately wanted to trust my husband's explanation, but I couldn't shake the feeling of unease regarding the tampon's odd placement and my husband's indifference to it. I decided to do something I now consider slightly irrational. I feigned an emergency and asked Fiona for a tampon while we were out together. She handed me a tampon nearly identical to the one I found in our car, putting my mind at ease momentarily. I concluded that the tampon in our car was likely the same as the one she had, and there must be a reasonable explanation for its presence. However, my relief was short-lived when I discovered another tampon in my sock drawer this morning. This discovery left me physically ill at the thought of my husband's infidelity and I was even more nauseated by the possibility that the woman involved might be leaving these tampons for me to find. If it were indeed his co-worker Fiona, why would she give herself away by offering me one? I'm too overwhelmed and embarrassed to confront my husband with this revelation. What should I do? Relevant comments. Many users expressed concern and offered advice, including setting up surveillance cameras and considering the possibility of children moving the tampons. Update. The past 18 days have been a torment as I've tried to fathom the source of these two mysterious tampons. After sharing my predicament here, I confided in my sister about the tampon found in the car and the one in my sock drawer, as well as my husband's strange behavior and the tampon from Fiona. We compared tampons, excluding the one I had already discarded, and they matched, although they differed in absorbency. My daughters, age two and almost four, had not moved the tampons or known where they came from. My sister suspected Fiona's involvement in some way, either an affair with my husband or an elaborate prank. We decided against direct confrontation and instead planned to invite Fiona and her husband to our Labor Day barbecue. Unfortunately, they had prior commitments. We opted to wait before resorting to surveillance cameras, as we lacked concrete evidence. I kept a close eye on my husband for any changes in behavior. There were none. Searched the house for misplaced or unfamiliar items, found nothing and monitored my daughters for any unusual new friends. My sister's husband believed that if anything inappropriate were happening, it would be challenging to keep it from me and the children, as my husband was primarily responsible for their care. This reassured me to some extent. However, my perspective changed when my two-year-old daughter fell ill last week, requiring my husband to stay home with her while I worked. Initially, I accepted this arrangement, grateful for his willingness to take time off at short notice. By the fourth day, I was relieved to see a significant improvement in our daughter's health. But when I returned home one evening, something was amiss. The toddler whom I had left in old pajamas that morning was now dressed in a onesie I had never seen before, with the tiny hair clip adorning her hair. While my memory may not be perfect, I was confident in my knowledge of my children's daily attire. I had abandoned using full-length sleep suits with front snaps long ago, as they were inconvenient for diaper changes. It was unusual for me to dress my daughter in such an outfit, and my husband knew my preferences. He didn't shop for our girls' clothing or accessorize them, leaving me perplexed. I was also deeply concerned that someone had been around our sick child without my knowledge. I immediately questioned my husband about any visitors or changes in our children's clothing. He appeared bewildered, much as he had in the past and denied any such occurrences. Our older daughter was in the room at the time and sensed tension. Reluctantly, I decided to drop the matter, unable to make sense of the puzzling events that had unfolded. Relevant comments. Commenters speculated about potential explanations and offered suggestions, with some advising the use of surveillance cameras. Final update. My relentless pursuit of the truth had taken a toll on my mental and emotional well-being. 
I had become consumed by paranoia and distress, neglecting my sleep, appetite, and parental duties. Yet I remained in the dark. It was time to take decisive action, so I made the decision to install hidden cameras. My sister agreed to receive the cameras at her house and assist with the setup at mine. However, before the cameras arrived, a long-awaited revelation came to light. One day while I was at work, a ring notification alerted me to motion at our front door. Expecting it to be a delivery or some routine event, I was utterly astonished when I witnessed a young woman leading my daughter into our house, hand in hand, followed closely by my husband and our other daughter. Both girls were supposed to be in daycare and my husband at work. To my shock, the woman on the camera was none other than my husband's sister, who was supposed to be living two states away due to a court order. Desperate to get answers, I called my husband multiple times, but he didn't respond. In a text message, I confronted him about the woman's presence in our home. Eventually, he picked up the phone, likely realizing that I had seen the ring notification and that further delay was futile. The woman in question was, indeed, my husband's sister, who, as I later discovered, was responsible for the tampons, onesie, and hair clip. She also had a disturbing history as a registered sex offender and a recovering addict. During her youth, she had coerced another family member into silence after committing acts of molestation. I hadn't seen or heard from her in years, and my husband had never given me any indication that she would resurface. Yet here she was, in our house, with our children. I was livid, as this revelation shattered my trust and exposed a web of deceit. It wasn't an affair at all, but the truth was even more revolting, considering the identity of the person involved and the motive behind it. My sister-in-law, fresh out of rehab, had sought reconciliation with those she had harmed. And my husband was on her list. He had kept their meeting secret from me often occurring at our house while I was at work. They would enter through the garage in my husband's car, ensuring the ring camera at the front door wouldn't tip me off. She even spent a night in our home during a weekend business trip I had taken. This deceit ran deep, and it extended to my daughters, with her buying them clothes and dressing my youngest in the onesie and hair clip that my husband falsely claimed I had chosen. My husband continued to deny my accusations and gaslit me throughout the ordeal, suggesting I was experiencing postpartum depression even though it had been years since I gave birth. I gave him the benefit of the doubt because of our history together and my struggle with irrational suspicions. Now, after a month of torment and confusion, my trust had been shattered, leaving me with anger and heartbreak. Relevant comment, commenter recommended taking legal action and contacting the authorities, which the original poster confirmed they were already doing. I found tickets for a cruise that my BF got me. This gift has cemented for me that this relationship is over. My upcoming birthday revealed a gift from my boyfriend. Cruise tickets, unintentionally disclosed by his sister. I know it's meant for me, as I found it hidden away, but my heart sank rather than soared. This might sound unappreciative, but the gift is a glaring sign that our paths are diverging. The problem isn't the gift itself, but its significance. Cruises are my nemesis thanks to relentless seasickness. Plus, I had meticulously planned to attend a renaissance fair, a plan known to him which makes the cruise's timing bewildering. Its costliness adds insult to injury as I won't be using the tickets. Repeatedly, I've expressed to him my feelings of being unheard, of being an afterthought in his choices. It's not about the material things, it's about the decisions made without considering me. And I've reached my limit. Discussions have happened, but nothing changes. In the note attached to the gift, the detail and care he put into the packaging and cruise-themed contents only deepened my sadness. It showed he could have taken an interest in what I actually love, a single Ren Fair ticket, some themed trinkets, or even a costume piece would have touched my heart deeply, signifying he valued my interests. Update. The day I posted my thoughts here was the day our relationship came to an end. Confronted, he admitted the cruise was my surprise. His rationale was I should overlook my seasickness because he enjoyed cruises, thinking a pricey ticket would change my inherent discomfort. As he spoke, I felt a profound disconnection, realizing he had once again disregarded my desires for his own. When I voiced my decision to end things, he was stunned and argued, but I was emotionally detached. After hours of his attempts to discuss it, he resigned to my silence. The following day felt surprisingly ordinary, but I was resolute. I declined his attempts at conversation unless it pertained to logistics about our shared apartment or the lease. At work, I cataloged instances of his self-prioritization, three pages worth. That evening, I handed him the list. It was clear then, our relationship was irreparably fractured. Despite his reluctance to accept the breakup and suggestions for therapy or a break, my decision is final. 
I'm navigating through the emotional detachment and the practicalities of ending the lease. But amid the chaos, I'm holding on to the hope of enjoying my birthday, free from the relationship's weight, and looking forward to a new beginning.